Hello everyone, I'm Rhino and this is my complete guide to better DCS spotting. For those of you new to the channel, I fly mainly Cold War era jets and all helicopter modules and I specialize in the practical aspects of flying and fighting these modules, especially in highly competitive PvP environments. Anyone who has flown combat flight sims quickly realizes that SA or situation awareness is one of the most important skill sets to have for a combat pilot. This guide will mainly benefit those who fly and fight in within visual range, especially in the Cold War era or World War II, but there is some value for more modern modules and scenarios as well. In the Cold War era setting, radars and computing software are still in the early stages of development and look down, shoot down radars are almost non-existent for the most part. So the Mark I eyeball does most of the work. Since you do not have the benefit of advanced sensors, head mounted displays and HUDs, making sure you have the best settings to allow you to spot and react to enemies quickly is absolutely vital. The age old maxim, lose sight, lose the fight, still applies to this day and this guide aims to give you the edge by making sure your spotting and situational awareness are the best they can be. Before we dive into the settings, one last thing. This is a fact that is unfortunately true since the beginning of combat flight sims and sadly still applicable today. Your spotting will be better with lower resolution. This limitation of technology and how games are coded means that you will have to make a choice. Either have a very graphically pleasing simulation and be blind as a bat, or have reduced graphics, but have eagle eyes. The biggest benefit with DCS spotting is dropping your resolution to 1080p if you are using a higher res currently. While this downgrade has the most benefits, there are other settings that might help, but ultimately it is up to you. This guide has three parts. Windows and Nvidia settings, graphic settings in game and optional settings, namely using reshade. I will not show you before and after images for you to compare. Due to YouTube compression and encoding videos, you will never see as well on a video or a Twitch stream as well as you do on your own screen. So I will leave the comparisons to you. Let's dive into it. Windows and Nvidia driver settings. Unfortunately, I don't have any tips here for AMD users, but have no reason to believe these same settings won't apply. Open your NVIDIA control panel, manage 3D settings and turn off or confirm they are already off FXAA and MFAA. It might be beneficial to create a specific program settings for DCS if you don't want those settings turned off by default for all applications. While here, you can also make sure that your power management is set to prefer maximum performance and refresh rate for your monitor for highest available, as well as virtual reality pre-rendered frames set to one. And we're done here. Now let's open up DCS. Go to settings, system settings, and set MSAA in game to 4X. If you're really hurting for frames, 2x will do, but 4x is recommended. Ensure SSAA, SSLR, and SSAO are set to off. Set your anisotropic filtering to whatever you prefer. Highest your system can manage without significant FPS loss. It'll mitigate some of the jagginess from the lower resolution. Now for the resolution bit. As I mentioned earlier, the single biggest benefit that you get will be from dropping your resolution to 1080p if you are currently running 2K or 4K. If you have a single monitor, you can simply drop the resolution in game to 1080p and click the full screen tick box, sort it. Do not try to set the resolution to 1080p and use Alt Enter to stretch the window to full screen you will not be able to click anything in the cockpit because reasons. If you have multiple monitors using 1080p full screen 
will actually cause chaos with your monitor setup every time you alt tab or try to click something on the secondary monitor. So what you need to do to make that work and also retain use of your secondary monitors while flying is to set your monitor resolution to 1080p before launching DCS and revert to your usual resolution after playing. It's a bit of a pain, but it works. While you do these changes, make sure your refresh rate doesn't change from your highest available. Okay, and we're done with the in-game settings. Now for the optional, but highly recommended part, reshade. Not only will this improve your spotting even more, it'll also make your whole game a lot more aesthetically pleasing. Again, you will not see the true benefit in a video or stream as you do on your own PC, so I strongly urge you to just give it a try once. You know how it is. First time's the free one on the dealer, etc. I almost guarantee once you see the difference, you will not want to go back to default DCS. Also, Reshade does not eat up a lot of resources, as you might think. At most, you might lose up one or two FPS. It seems magic, but it just works. Trust me. Go to reshade.me and download the lot latest version. Launch the installer and then browse to your DCS folder. It will be in Program Files, Eagle Dynamics, DCS World, Bin. And then select DCS.exe. Select Next. Select DirectX 10, 11, 12 and click Next. And here it'll probably show Install for you. Uh, it shows Modify because I already have it installed. The only package you need to install is SweetFX. And in this package, the only one filters you really need are the following. You need to find Curves, Luma Sharpen and Vibrance. After that, just finish the installation and launch DCS. At the top, you'll notice the reshade bar will now show when you launch the game. It will soon disappear. If it gives you an error message about not being able to save or load profiles, you need to give it administrator privileges. Uh, find reshade.ini in the folder of the game, right click properties to the security tab and add permissions for all application packages. If you press home, the default menu will appear. Probably useful to create a profile once you've uh, selected these. You can do that with the buttons at the top. Now tick the three profiles we mentioned, the curves, Luma Sharpen and Vibrance. And then basically the only setting that I mess with uh, from the defaults will be uh, to drag the Vibrance bar more to the right. You can see this change in real time in the even on the screenshot uh, or the wallpaper in the game, but it's a lot better if you do this while you're actually in a mission and you can set it to your own preference. You can also adjust the other bars and see what they do. Uh, sharpening will make contacts show up better, but uh, some people do not like the effect. The last thing that I recommend is to bind something for effect toggle key, at least at the beginning. This will show you exactly what the filters do and you can quickly toggle them on or off. And they work every time DCS is loaded, even in the loading screen. And yes, that is how stock DCS is compared to just the basic reshade filters that I've shown you. Now open up a mission and just fly for a bit. Have a look around and toggle the filters on and off and see what a massive difference this makes, not only in how the game looks, but also how much easier it is to spot contacts, be they close or far. And with that, we've reached the end of this tutorial. I hope this will be helpful in your quest for better situational awareness. If you found this useful, well, it's not your first YouTube rodeo. You know what to do with those buttons. Also, I'd really like to hear if this has helped you in the comments section below.
For more tips and tutorials, come join us at twitch.tv slash rhino and make sure you visit the extensive DCS knowledge base that we're building in the Discord. The link will be below in the description. Rhino out.